So you finished the shooting in 2008 or so? Yeah. Okay, and then went on to do the editing through 2009. Yeah. The first showing was late 2009 or so? Yeah. Um, it took me about a little over a year to edit it um, because I had all this material mm. and embarrassment of riches. And the, f the premiere, the very first premiere of the film was July in Freiburg University at the Aula, at the Freiburg Auditorium, mm. where Martin Heidegger in May of 1933 gave his famous rector speech. Wow. And uh, there's a photograph of that same aula with Nazi banners and stuff. And, and the statues that were in that photograph are still there. You know, a classic German mm. Wissenschaft and, and all pre-Nazi stuff. You know, it wasn't... Had, um, and so I showed it in July. And... Uh, um, so that would be uh, 76 years and a few months to the day. Yeah. Yeah. And what's interesting is... The uh, Badische Zeitung, which is the major newspaper in Freiburg, um, a, a reporter called me up and s heard that I was going to show this film and asked if he could see it, mm -hmm. and, or if she could see it. It was a woman. And I said, sure. So I sent her my film. And a couple days later, she called me back up, and she was just, she and her husband watched it together. Her husband happens to be a Germanistic professor at the University of Freiburg. Mm and uh, a big Paul Salon expert. He's, mm. I'm now using him in my Paul Salon film. But um, she was totally begeistered, totally enthusiastic, and wrote a full page, front page on the cultural section of the body Zeitung wow. about my film. And um, originally I was going to show it in a smaller room and then they had to overnight move me into the aula because they realized that people were going to show up. This was now an event. Yeah, it was now an event. And in fact, uh, what I found out later is that events like this, the Heidegger family shows up. Hermann Heidegger and his family, Jörg Heidegger and his wife, they came. Mm. They sat in the second row right at the front. And um, the, the house, the place was packed. Mm -hmm. And uh, part of the reason is the Heideggers, there's this Frison, there's this thing going on in Freiburg, which is a small town, and people know every know, know knows every everyone knows each other, and um, whenever there's something about Heidegger, Hermann shows up because he's always out there protecting his dad's reputation, yes. which I understand. And so, in the as this film is rolling along, in about the middle of the film, somebody's yelling out, "Lüge, Lüge, alles Lüge, lies, lies, all lies," was Hermann Heidegger. And then a little bit later, he calls out, nicht wahr, this is nicht wahr, that's not true, that's not true. And then people were saying, shut up, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and then I realized this is going to be a, and sure enough, we had this big post-film discussion with Tom Rockmore, Hugo Ott, Reiner Martin, Bant Martin, Silke Seyman, who wrote the book on denazification at, yes. at Freiburg University, and myself, and Hermann Heidegger in the audience. And at one point, he got so angry, he, came up to the podium and says, can I come up? And I said, of course you may. And we helped him up. He's, he was in his late 90s and he was, just had a cancer operation. And uh, the, there were the pro-Heideggerians, the anti-Heideggerians, and people started screaming and back and forth. Some people were really Nazi. And I'm sitting here thinking, wow, I couldn't ask for a better <laughs> showing. <laughs> and, right. and, um, but I have to say this. I, I spent six and a half hours with Hermann Heidegger and I liked him immediately. Mm. I, you know, he, and and uh, some people were being pretty uh, uncivil. And I got up to the podium and I said, "Listen, I said, Hermann Heidegger is the son, and he obviously, his father loved him, and he loved his father. And I understand why he's here to protect his father's reputation mm. and to defend him. But there are some things that just can't be defended. And and then the the head of the philosophy department at Freiburg." Right at the beginning of the film, he walked up to me and says, who's responsible for this? And I said, well, uh, I've been invited by the history department. The philosophy department wouldn't touch it. Really? Why no, not? Because they're Heideggerians. Uh. Uh, von Herrmann, head of the philosophy department, and uh, he came up to me and says, who's responsible for this? I said, well, I guess the history department, and I'm the director. And so at, in the question and answering period, he had, the, he had stood up and he said, well, you know, I would have thought if you were to do a film about Heidegger, you would have done much more about the Greek, you know, presidents, the antecedents, and going back to this and that. Mm -hmm. 
And I said, well, yeah. I said, um, and my suggestion is if, 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 you, if you want, make your own Heidegger film. Uh, I said, you know, I, I'm responsible for the film I made, not for the film somebody thinks I should have made. Sure. And um, it, it was really a, a, an unbelievable thing. The reason why is because there's a lot of resentment in Freiburg against the, uh, the Heidegger family. Hmm. Because every time somebody writes something in the article in the newspaper, they're immediately on the phone yelling and screaming mm. to the press and to you name it. And I think th that just irritated. And plus, Elfrida Heidegger is loathed, just hated among many sections of Freiburg society because... And who is she? She was Martin Heidegger's wife. Ah, yes. And, and Elfrida was the real enthusiastic Nazi and rabid anti-Semite, mm. a real Jew hater. And when she was... Um, in the Nazi, she was a member of the some Nazi group, and she directed women who worked the streets when the Freiburg was bombed to clean up the the the, the, the destruction and mm. bricks and stuff. And if these women were sick or even pregnant, she would insist that they not leave their. Arm. She really was hated. Mm. And Hermann Heidegger even said to me once, he said, "You know, my mother was just a difficult person mm. all the way through her life. I mean, uh, and so you can imagine and." If you read her the the letters that Herman to Martin Heidegger wrote his wife Elfrida, um, you can see this real problem. I mean, um, she knew that he was unfaithful. Uh, yet at the same time, she did everything she could to promote his career mm. and to help him along in 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 that. And she was the one that was the the enthusiastic Nazi. Mm -hmm. As if Heidegger wasn't enthusiastic enough already. Well, it's interesting. Um, Heidegger uh, rejected much of rabid Nazism that came out of the Rosenberg. Mm. You know, in, those of us in America, or at least those who are f not that familiar with European or German history, we think Nazism is a monotheistic. <laughs> but there was a left side, there was a middle, and there was a right, right wing Nazism. And Rosenberg was part of that biological racism, you know, Jewish blood. Sure bloods from, from sub-mention like blacks in Africa or the Slavs in Eastern Europe. Sure. And Heidegger uh, rejected that biological racism, mm -hmm. but he accepted the so-called geistes or spiritual or intellectual racism. Right. So. All right, so dynamite material, the film's about two hours, is that correct? Yeah. Okay, and you do a certain amount of history on location shots, Heidegger significant places. Yeah. And uh, seven or eight, by my count, of leading Heidegger scholars focusing on different aspects of Heidegger's thought and yeah. biography. Uh, okay. Which, w to answer the question you asked about ten minutes ago, yeah. uh, how I had come to interview these people. Yes. Um, when I showed my film at Penn State University, D uh, D Doug Sm uh, David Smith and uh, I forget the other guy's name, they're strong Heideggerians mm. and uh, very nice people very smart, you know, certainly smarter than I am. And they were very nice to me. And then I showed my film, and Professor Smith's first comment was, I don't know what to say. Mm. That's got to be the worst film I have ever seen. And then it started. They came loaded for bear. Okay. They just attacked <clears throat> right and left. And uh, everything they could nitpick about the film, because they really felt threatened. Uh, they really felt that my film was so one-sided and they said to me why didn't you have the so-and-so in the film why didn't you have so-and-so in the film I said all right let me just say this I'm a filmmaker and I accept your criticism you have a perfect right not to like my film and your criticism to an extent is valid I said but as a journalist filmmaker I decide I'm going to make a film about Heidegger and I'm going to make a film about Heidegger and Nazism mm -hmm. so what I do is I do research and what do I find? I find all of those people that wrote books about that topic are the people I contacted. Sure. I said, you guys didn't write a book about Heidegger and Nazism. You wrote some books about Heidegger. But I mean, my God, there must be, what, 15,000 books on mm -hmm. Heidegger? Sure. I mean, it's a cottage industry. Mm -hmm. So uh, to that extent, I went to what I consider to be the experts on Heidegger and Nazism, Hugo Ott, Victor Farias, Tom Rockmore. And in that sense, then, uh, 
Well, as a good friend of mine in Germany says, it's not one-sided, it's just the truth. Uh, <laughs> well, the truth is one-sided, that's right. The debate about the truth is often two-sided. Yeah. Uh, if I could ask you then, the, the, uh, those who are uh, interested in carrying on Heidegger's legacy uh, and who therefore feel threatened by your film, what aspects in the film do you think are most threatening to them? Is it they would uh, not like to have mention or discussion of Heidegger's interaction with the Nazis because they think it's not yeah. true or that it's irrelevant yeah. Yeah. Uh, or that in some sense it is relevant but they believe the philosophy is sound and so they want to naturally distance as much as they can. What, yeah. What's the take It's a there? good question and, and that question changes over time. Mm. Initially that was it. They didn't even want to admit but they can't do that anymore. Yeah. All of them admit Heidegger was a Nazi. All right. Okay. Uh, they, uh, but of course, if you know anything about Heidegger's philosophy, you know that you can't, like other thinkers, you can't separate the man from his thought, mm. because that's an integral part of his own philosophy. Frege, the great mathematician, was a rabid Jew hater, yet nobody denies his brilliance in mathematics. And the Heideggerians are trying to do the same thing. They're trying to say he was brilliant in his thought, but as a mensch, as a human being, he failed. Mm. You know, and um, so to separate the man from the thinking. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, what uh, is the availability of the documentary now? Well, um, it's going to be back on. We just ordered a bunch more, and it's going to be back on uh, Amazon um, in about a week. Well, thanks for being with us here today. Thank you. I enjoyed speaking with you very much. Fascinating material. Yeah. My goodness.